Hey everybody, how's it going? Feeling a little bit better today. Still got a little pain. Got to suck on a little water and it goes away. Strange. Strange. But guess what? The polyurethane is on all the desk. I got the bottom sides of the shelves all done. That's done. Got the door on. I'm getting ready to do the drawer boxes. Get them mounted. So, but yet, I've started another project. Yes, I started another one. Uh, let's see. Here's kind of a picture it looks like. It's got the base, drawer, and then display case. This one I am making out of walnut. Well, I got cut yesterday and I forgot to bring you guys along on this new project, but I uh, had to get the router set back up after doing the other project. and. Got her set up and I'm putting a face frame together. And so, I guess, we'll see if I can get you set up here. And Sorry about that. Gotta extend the legs a little. Okay. Now I'm staying up here. Uh, of course, it's pointed down. But anyway. Yeah, okay, don't look. Well, it'll turn you just a little. All right, there. Well, um, on this project here, I'm using the Bloom half-inch concealed hinges, and I found out your face frames. Most of the time, my face frame stuff, the material, I keep as thick as I can, 13 16 I don't take it to three quarter because otherwise things get really thin and that. Well, I found out with those concealed hinges, they need a three quarter inch face frame. So I had to resaw these to get them close because it's going to go through the surface sander. And that's the other thing you got to remember too. I'm using the pot. I'm using what they call the pocket hole setup, and uh, uh, you got to remember if you got a surface sander like I do, and that, and you use that to flatten stuff. You either a got to remember to take the screws out, so when you get sanded down, you ain't burning your sandpaper up. Or you just remember they're there, and uh, then I'm using the what they call face frame clamp. And a friend of mine, him and his brothers, come up with this setup years ago. And since this is walnut, I'm trying to make sure I don't get any glue squeezing out where it shouldn't. And just simply. Uh, Tell you a surface sander can uh, take a messed up project and straighten it out. And I have taken the time to reset my router bits here a while back and got them to where they're all cutting pretty respectable. And now, if I hadn't planned on taking these uh, screws out, I would have simply just assembled with the screws. Here's another thing you got to remember too. When you do a groove like I've got going here, you got to remember which way. If you put it in the other way, then your outside piece would uh, want to ride on the inside there. So, and on wider boards, I usually use uh, two clamps. Come on. And always make sure it's flush, but once you screw and glue it, you're done. Yeah, yeah. Not happy there, see. So I got one more shot. Get you down. 
behave here. Oh, I have to fill my tooth again. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I got a tooth problem. I had the wife at the doctor stopped in at a dentist. Yeah, that's a joke. This one here, I gotta remember to do it before I put the base together. I'm gonna put pocket holes here and here and oh you can't even see that. I gotta remember to I'm gonna put pocket holes here and here to hold the top down. So and also if you got a surface sander you, you probably know to make sure you get the glue off because otherwise that destroys your belt in a heartbeat. But there is the base face frame. And what this groove here for is for the floor to go in. When you make the tongue there, you just take and route off the excess. But uh, the way I build things, um, since this is all going, I've got it to a rough thickness. And see, like when it goes through the surface sander, not a, I haven't figured out if I got a planer that's breaking or what, but I haven't been using my big planer, but. I ran that through a good side down. That should have been flush just like that there. And it didn't. So and I've got enough extra there that when I run that through the surface sander, that's going to clear all that up and make it flat. Well, another guy I used to work with, he couldn't comprehend that. And he always wanted to cut all the parts for it all at once. I said, well, we run sand that stuff. Even hand sanding plywood, you take a 30 second off, that's, I'm going to get that wrong. If you take two 30 seconds off, you took a 16th of an inch off, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go by my math, but, uh, so you took a 16th of an inch off, and that's not much, but when you've cut parts to fit interference, that's a 16th inch gap, so... And then you start tweaking your cabinet, and yeah. But now, and since the last one I did, the only thing I had was they said it should have been a little bit bigger. Well, when I was cutting parts yesterday, I couldn't add for crap. And this is actually an inch and a quarter bigger than what the first one was. Which, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I haven't, I don't mass produce things, I custom make things. And that's what some people don't understand about doing this woodwork. This is not a production shop, this is a custom made shop. And so, some people have a hard time understanding that. But uh, yeah, so, I don't think there's any projects I've done the same twice. They all look alike, but something's always different from another one. Well, you know that octagon gun cabinet. I really changed that from the last one I done. And I'm almost thinking about making one of those out of walnut here. Which uh, I think would look good. Only the problem is the walnut plywood. And you definitely didn't want to screw up cutting that. That stuff's up to 156 bucks a sheet. So that would be a little bit more spendy. That one made out of walnut probably be about twenty two hundred bucks, if not more. So, well, I just wanted to get this going. Um, like I said, I planed wood and stripped out. I got two inch stuff there, some inch and a half stuff there, because also that's another thing I do. Let's see if I can do this now without it all falling apart. <laughs> oh yeah, Duh. got a camera here, don't I? Let me get this flipped around. And see what you see in there, okay? And let's see. And see, this is the wrong side. That side would go over there. Okay. The reason I got some inch and a half stuff in here 
is because when you're done, you want this one board to look like it's a two inch piece like the rest of everything. And another thing I do, I don't even know if you've seen what, yeah, you see right here, two inch. That's going to look like two inches there. So you get that all clamped up and squeezed up. It just, oh, look at how nice that close up, it just disappears. So then that looks like a two inch board. And down here, I learned a long time ago, I don't go smaller than three inches on anything on base. The simple being, the reason is, at three inches, you got a two and a half inch clearance because you got a half inch overlap for the door. Otherwise, you go smaller than that, you're smacking your toes with the door. So, now that I got this made, now I know the size of my panel I got to make for the raised panel for this. So I can make my raised panels, put those together. And another thing is to cut the tongue on this, I will not do that until after going through a surface sander. Now, if you don't have the surface sander and that, you're going to have to change the ways on how you do things. Because uh, the surface sander takes off thickness. Well, this bit set depends on what you're... I can do the, combine the two thicknesses because the tongue you always work with the good side down once this is flat and straightened out then I can go through and route in this bit set I'll, if I remember I'll show you if you put it oh I can show you now just a second here I got a piece over here I know I just walked off and left that stain in space okay all right now here's the opposite cut. See one side's thicker than the other. And then if you use thicker wood, sometimes that almost becomes centered, so you really gotta pay attention. So when you put it in, put it in, it comes out flush, see? Let's see. Yeah. And that if you flip it over and put it on the wrong way. Or if you've got a piece that you know is not going to straighten out the best and you want to hide it, you flip that over, and then you end up with this little lip there. And depending on how you set your bits, you can control the amount of how that lip is. If you want to do that and then run a flush trim over that, so you know. Alright, yeah, I'd have to think a little bit more on that, but yeah, that's the look I'm going for, the flush there. Oh, just I need a drink. So, and same thing with the pocket holes. Once these raised panels are made, let's see, there's the top. I need to put a pocket hole in here. God damn it, I gotta remember that. That's the top here on this edge right here pocket holes will go in before you put it together so you can screw your top down that's if you use the pocket hole system um, so I guess I'm one to ah look at the camera <laughs> I'm just having a heck of a time here but I'll try showing and demonstrating stuff and I'll get the panels glued up I mean if Pretty much everybody knows how to glue a piece of wood together. and I've got the finger joint bits and the reverse glue joint bits. Because there for a while I was getting where I was uh, matching antique stuff. And I found the router bits that pretty much matched the antique set. And this is, oh, I wish I would have had a camcorder a long time ago. But, uh, well, I did the old VHS, but I never used them. I had an old table that was a hundred and... 107 years old at the time when I done it somewhere in there and they brought it to me from the skirt down was saveable tabletop by the time I would have got it flat I recut it and yeah there went it so I just made an entire new top for the gal she come to pick it up and she goes oh you did save the top I says uh, no uh, and she kind of looked funny at me because I found a modern day router bit to match the table top edge exactly the way it was 
and she swore up and down. I don't know if she ever believed me or not. I said, no, that's a new top. I showed her the old top. It was still in pieces and all warped and cut and twisted. She goes, no, that's got to be the same top. So she was tickled with that. And uh, So as far as I know, that table's still in existence and still being used. Uh, she had a bunch of antiques and uh, she's got a barn full of antiques. Now that I'm in here, I don't know, maybe I should see if I could get a hold of her. She wanted me to do more, and I was kind of getting fed up with the antiques. I was, uh, oh, I had a lot of things going on in my life at that time. I was just getting, got, I got burned out on woodworking for a while, and then the car thing, and then now I'm doing both. <laughs> so, I'm trying to do a how-to video here, and I'll shut up and just quit babbling. Got to remember that, so. All right. When I get set up to make the raised panels, uh, I'll come back and get you guys and show you how that's done. Well, as I shut the camera off, I thought of something. I'm like, oh, crap. Somebody's going to catch it because I just did. You know, I've been saying you got to route all this stuff after after the surface hammer. What did I go and do here with this face frame? I cut the grooves. But luckily, if I take too much off the back, Luckily, all I got to do is go back over the router table over there and uh, just rerun it because that's flat. But like this one, uh, shoot, that one's going to be, I might end up, if I end up taking too much off the back, I mean, there is just a little bit of a glue space in there, but. What I'll have to do when I get my floor cut the size, route it, and if I have to, I can walk over the edge sander and take a little bit of that tongue off. You got to keep it turned on. You got to keep thinking ahead, planning ahead. And that's one reason I stopped taking that medicine because yesterday, simple things like what I needed to figure out, I couldn't figure. I finally quit and went home and watched TV and sat with the family, but... So if anybody caught that before I come back and explained it, and you know what? Hey, we learn by our mistakes. So there's one mistake I forgot well, I got to do. Well, it is a mistake, but it ain't a mistake. But I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I know how I'm going to fix that. I'll cut, like I said, cut it the size that I need, route it, then take off that little tongue because then your floor size will be established. So. Hey, we're only human, and this is what keeps you young and thinking. You got to keep the brain turned on. So, all right, I just noticed that, and I'm sure somebody would have commented. All right, guys. Well, I got the panels made here, cut the size, and uh, look pretty good. Got them here. The good side always goes down. And I got a big uh, bit in there, big three and a half inch diameter bit that I finally uh, I used to run in my router table, but I kept tearing up the router, so I finally broke down and uh, put it in here. But being such a big bit, it is suggested to take multiple passes, so that's what we're going to do. And it keeps from tearing out woods. So, well. Try and stay out of the view.
those look nice. I tell you, this walnut is very, very dry. I don't know how many years ago I was cut on a buzz saw, but. All right, let's see. What you guys. And with the router bit setup I'm doing, I've uh, get it to where it just clears. Now it's not much clearance, but the frame is moved. But uh, otherwise, the panel is a quarter inch less than what the. Uh, thing is so well I'll get these oh that's right I zoomed in sorry guys I'll get these uh, sanded and ready and I'll come back and show you the glue up on this okay we'll go ahead glue one of these up and I see I got my head cut off sorry about that guys uh, let's see yep sanded do what you can well, I've got it apart, otherwise, yeah, once you get it together, there is no sand in those down there. And I just remembered a little trick I even like doing here. Let's take a this block sander, just set her on the edge, a couple strokes back and forth over that on everything, and cleans up your inside edge because once it's glued together, there's no more getting to that. So. Youngest should look better. She went and got her hair cut, so. Well, I should say she does look better. I was better, so. Okay. And then I got these things called the panel line strips. I just put those in at random. And what this does, that's why you cut the panel a quarter inch smaller than you need. Is because uh, these go in there. And what that does is keep your panel from rattling. Jeez. Ouch. Oh, come on. Hmm. Hmm. And then, uh, then you get ready to glue this together. It doesn't make weather. But whenever you put glue in here, always stay back. Stay back from this corner right there. If you get glue here, it's going to squeeze out, and then you got a corner to clean. So. And then it's just a matter of, and when I put it together, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, I always put it together and help squeeze the glue away from that uh, decorative edge, push it so it comes out the end, so. And get it lined up flush, push it together, wipe off excess glue if you got it. So, same and again, I'm trying to look up. I'm trying to get better at doing this. So, Maybe that where you can find it. It's been on the flush. And then, uh, when you're ready to, I didn't get that camera very good today. When you're ready to. Drop your panel in and seat those little, little uh, panel line strips and then come put glue. Take your other and then I've managed to put all the clamps away. <laughs> Here I'll 
can get the other one done. I'll show you guys over here. Turn on. Turn. Ouch. Ooh, this. Gotta get this tooth or whatever it's in my mouth taken care of. stuff I've learned real quick doing this stuff to take an eyeball down this edge for some reason if it, I put clamp pressure on and yeah this one's kind of showing I don't know if it'll show up or not but, uh, let's see okay. okay where is it Kind of see how, it, I don't know if it's really showing up. Looks like it's bowed a little. Just a matter of uh, repositioning the clamp. Yeah, that's straightened it out. I don't know. If, where is it? Yeah, it's straightened that out. And like I said, wipe the squeeze off out and wipe it on your bench. So this side's pretty. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I gotta. Like I said, my surface sander takes care of most of that, but if you can prevent it, that's even better yet. So we're getting close to having three sides of the base of this thing done already, and here's your panel. See that's nice and solid, don't wiggle. Um, if you didn't have those in there, and also with the way I've done that, I mean my corners line up there, so. But yeah, I'm gonna glue this other panel together and uh, I'll surface sand these yet, yeah, get these flat, and try and have the three sides of this thing together. Sorry about that. And, uh, and then I can keep on going. So, well, bringing you back when uh, I go to route to do the tongue yeah, after the sanding. And, uh, oh, yeah, I got to do pocket holes. So, I'll bring you back again. All right. Well, sorry, guys. I was going to run these through the surface sander, get them ready, but I think we'll call this part one. I'm um, all of a sudden, oh, uh, right up in here, it's starting to hurt. And I feel like I'm getting warm, so I want to shut down. Let's go to the ER. This is no fun, so. Yeah. Oh. But, man, shutting stuff down. So I gotta get out of here. It's getting to the point where I gotta have water damn near in my mouth. I've drank so much water. I've probably put on 100 pounds of water. But yeah, anyway, this is a woodworking video, not a medical video. So, talk to you guys later. Bye.